Hello, everyone, and welcome to Digital Journeys. I'm Jerry Herodin, and I will be your moderator today. Joining me is John Bart, Strategic Alliances Director for Cherry Beckert, and David Apple, Head of the Software as a Service Vertical at SAGE. John and David will be discussing the hidden cyber risk of financial data silos for software as a service companies. So with that, let's get started. David, you're up first. What is a data silo? <laughs> well, folks, you might not even need me to tell you. You already know you're trying to learn something that's kind of stacked in one group. Sometimes they hold on to it really tight. They don't want to share with it all. But it's as you build applications, as you try to automate processes, you then put in some software in order to take it. But if it becomes insular and holding the data in its own place, it's really hard to unpack that, weave it together with all other pieces of the business, because what you're ultimately looking for is answers and forecasts and, and understanding how where that's coming. And so that's the data that you want to get out of this. A, a classic example is the CRM system, having some of the contact information in it and maybe some of the order information, but if nobody else can see that, such as finance doesn't know where to send the invoice or customer success doesn't know who the original champion for the project was or professional services doesn't know who had the exact date of what the business requirements needs to look like, it all falls apart. So John, do you have any perspective on what a data silo is or have any questions for David? Yeah, it, I see it all the time with our customers and being a CIO in the past, uh, experienced it. And it is problematic, but we'll get into that and what some of the some of the reasons for it, but uh, yes, I do, and and uh, it it's uh, it does hinder growth. Well, and Cherry Baker, and you guys do this. I mean, you've done it for thousands and thousands of clients, and getting in, advising them, and helping them become better and even more operational. But it's what the what the pattern for all of you listening to pay attention to is somebody you run into a wall where manual. Uh, processes or slowing things down and someone wants to solve it. And that's great. You should empower them. But the thing that you need to do as leaders is to have them consider the broader whole, the broader construct and the broader use of the data. So why are data silos problematic? <laughs> Again, for everybody, you kind of already know this. That's why you're listening is you're just like, oh my gosh, I got to I got to deal with this, whatever the example is. Another classic example is a, a, a payable comes in from a vendor, and uh, but it comes into one system, and then you need to route it in order to have someone approve to pay it, but they don't have enough context as to what it was and who approved it and why it was important, and is there enough cash set aside in order to cover it with the right approval controls? Like this, it's just those are just two small examples upon what comes into it, but it all revolves around there's a lack of visibility and transparency. And when that happens, there's compliance issues because however big you are, someone wants to make sure that you're acting truthfully, ethically, and the best interests of the customers, the employees, and the shareholders. And when this occurs, there's going to be so much impact to the cost of expense of doing this incorrectly and then exposing yourself potentially to security risks that come up. It can get really expensive. I think, you know, we saw a recent survey came out by IBM showing that the cost of a breach can get up to $3.6 million. That's an expensive amount of insurance to have to keep around. John, I I have a question for you. From your experience, have you worked with clients before where they've had this breach of data? I say fortunately, no. My experience, so just take that in that vein, is usually uh, if it's an unknown, like uh, the level of complexity you need to put in and, and to be secure and compliant, it's quite an investment. And um, companies will tend not to understand that and make those investments until they have a problem. So, um, Unfortunately, they're exposed to potential um, breaches. All right. Thanks for that. So let's talk a little bit more about consolidating financial data and why that's critical for security and compliance, and especially as it evolves around cloud native platforms. David, do you want to take that one on? Well, yeah. Again, the whole point of having the data is to understand exactly what's happening and then the, the, the concept of consolidation, there's you might have multiple business entities, you might have to have done some acquisitions, 
maybe expanded internationally or rolled out a new product line or something along those lines or customer cohorts. There's a lot of different ways in order to slice and dice how all this comes together. But the important thing is to know where those things are. And then there's three tips whenever you're trying to do integrations. Do you have a common item, customer, and order master record? And are those fields of informed and at least similar and know how to be found across all of them? That's all number one. Number two is, do you know the dependencies of what the workflow is the system is going to be? So uh, a payable comes in via system and then it gets you know updated into the system and then the workflow happens and you know what the cash balance is and then how the payment's going to occur. And that third part, what's the questions you want to ask in order to help understand the past impact of previous decisions and forecast future business opportunities that you have and how you try to approach all of this. Those are the three things to always ask yourself as you're trying to approach consolidations. John, do you have anything you want to add to that? I I think those are very key points. And um, again, it's uh, really understand the process and how they they play together from an IT perspective. We would call that a data architecture. uh, And that's part of an overall enterprise architecture. Uh, that's something that both Intact and Cherry Becker can help with, but uh, uh, those are key points. If I'd add one thing to this, and because this builds on John's great background as a CIO, the more you can have a single source of truth, the better off you're going to be. And and as you as finance leaders and departmental leaders come to you asking for budget and other systems, be supportive, but ask them how do you get everything in the single system of record and Because the financial system is the one system that's audited, the more you can get everything into the financial system, because then you can be sure that it's accurate and truthful and ethical because it's audited, better off you're going to be as opposed to chasing down data. The the CRM system says one piece of information. Customer success says another system. Uh, the, The financial system says one thing. It just turns into who can pound the desk the loudest and shout the loudest is what everyone agrees upon is the right piece of data when it very well might not be. So the, again, these are these are ways you can take control in order to affect change that's gonna put you and the company in the best position. All right, great. So Sage has a great product with Sage Intact. Uh, yeah. Cherry Beckard offers Sage Intact. Um, let's talk about how it can help eliminate data silos. Well, let's simplify companies into how money's coming in with the quote to cash process and money's going out with the procure to pay process. And uh, Sage uh, has made a a number of investments that let's talk of the money coming in, whatever industry you're in, you're a healthcare provider having to do billing, a non-for-profit trying to track donors and donor funds that are coming in, a retail customer trying to track retail customer data coming in, whether e-commerce or via your brick and mortar, sites or the businesses that I run on the subscription business that has a reoccurring revenue deal of getting the first customer and then upselling over time. We put very good processes in place for you to be able to automate all that and all of it come in I mean, but with dimensional tags that represent what everything is on what region, what customer, what rep, what cohort, I mean what is department class location and on and on to come in and then when all of it comes in, the data is there because you want the central system to tell you what much cash you have, how much profitability you have. And then similarly on the payables that are coming in, what, what rents do, what payrolls do, what insurance payments are due, what vendor payments are all due. And if you, you can put it in there and we've been, I'm so, so honored to say this, our customers on G2 and Trust Radius, and Gartner Insights have consistently over the last six years rated us as number one by customer vote across all the categories of payables, receivables, general ledger, subscription billing, uh, uh, dashboards and analytics. And that's the best validation we can have is that the people are actually using it, being that successful with using it and feeling like they want to be that big an advocate that they're taking the time and energy to go vote and represent us as such. Well, let me add to what David said too. Uh, I will confirm they put a high value on customer satisfaction, customer retention. So there's just, there's no question that's very, very important to them. And it shows in the G2 crowd or it's called G2 now. 
and the and the responses they get there. And also uh, they're supported and preferred by AICPA, which goes a long way in terms of the credibility of the application. And that's been I I don't even remember how long that's been, David. And maybe you know, I don't know. It's been for 12 10, years. 12 years, yeah. So that that's a long uh, uh, relationship that goes back. Uh, also, to extend on David's point, is the API is great, and and uh, there's many marketplace partners that offer third-party applications that take advantage of the architecture with dimensions. Um, and there's key key partnerships that Intact has, Salesforce, ADP, for example, that are great relationships and uh, integrate extremely well. Uh, with the product. So it, it extends into the full ecosystem of Sage Intact. And and we've had that experience. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to say there's one type of particular customer. Uh, it's really, I mean, I'd simplify it in saying if you're in a growth mode and for various reasons, the product really supports that well. And, and it allows for uh, easy configuration changes and support you down your, your growth path. Well, it's for all of you, what you need is great functional expertise to put the workflows in place, but with somebody who understands the business application and the culture application on how you're going to transform how you did your processes before and how you're going to do them today. And there's a reason why John and his co-leaders of the Intact practice there have been routinely partner or one of our partners of the year for many years in a row because you understand it and you follow through on the delivery. And thank you for being our partner. And for all of you, uh, today was really about trying to help you get some thoughts around if these issues are popping up, how do you, you know, how do you weed them out early before they become big? Because if you don't deal with it early, you get a lot more data, a lot more historical, and it becomes a lot harder to change later on. Like most problems in life, you don't always see them coming, but when you see them, deal with them while they're still manageable. All right, guys. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time today. I hope this was helpful for everybody listening. It's a pleasure meeting you, John and Jerry, as always. Thank you for including me in your uh, reaching out to help your customers. Thanks, David. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate it. Thanks again, John and David, for educating our listeners today. And as always, feel free to like and share this podcast. Stay tuned for the next Digital Journeys.